Boston, Massachusetts, February 1st, 2019. Geologist Dr. Robert Schock and his colleague, Dr. Manu Saifzadeh, announced a discovery that has the potential to radically alter the currently accepted timeline of human history. They believe they have found hieroglyphic writing at the 12,000-year-old archaeological site of Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. If true, it would predate the earliest known writing by thousands of years. At Gobekli Tepe, I'm convinced now that we have evidence of actual, what we can only call writing, symbolic notation, writing on some of the pillars. We're still trying to interpret them, but if this analysis is correct, they had writing. And according to standard conventional thinking up until now, writing and literacy did not exist anywhere on Earth until six or 7,000 years after Gobekli Tepe. And what we see at Gobekli Tepe, I don't believe that's the beginning. Could the strange symbols found on the stone pillars at Gobekli Tepe represent a writing system that was developed by a long lost civilization? One that thrived more than 12,000 years ago. As far as ancient astronaut theorists are concerned, Physical evidence of lost civilizations has been found that they believe to be much, much older. Pinar del Rio, Cuma, 2001. Canadian explorer Paulina Zelitsky and her team are conducting an oceanic survey off the coast when they detect curious formations more than 2,000 feet underwater. They found when they were taking images, some kind of pyramidical structure and other structures. There were circular areas. There was what appeared to be some kind of city built down there. It was about two square kilometers in size. And so this is something quite astonishing if this is you know, a reality. This pyramid city is so deep in the ocean that geologists and archaeologists are saying that it, it must have be 50,000 years old for sea levels to, to be that low. 50,000 years old? Might the formations found off the coast of Cuba corroborate the findings of Dr. Mark Carlotto, who suggests that the alignments of Baalbek, the Greek Parthenon, and numerous other ancient structures date back some 50,000 years. We've got ruins all over the world that are underwater. Ruins have been found underwater in Lake Titicaca. The formation of Yonaguni off the southern Japanese island of Yonaguni. We have underwater cities around India, such as Dwarka, which is the famous home of Krishna. And Indian archaeologists for years thought it was just a mythical city until they started finding these underwater ruins off of Gujarat. There's over 200 known sunken cities in the Mediterranean. So much of the evidence for early civilizations on planet Earth would be underwater today. So they were obviously built at a time when the ocean levels and the seas and the continents were quite different than they are today. All of this evidence tells us that there were extraordinary civilizations and cultures that have been lost to the story of the world until now. Although many of the world's known underwater ruins still await excavation due to the difficulty of reaching them and retrieving artifacts, it is hoped that divers will someday be able to examine these structures and find symbols carved into them that match those found at Gobekli Tepe. But as far as Dr. Robert Schock is concerned, the wait may already be over. In 1991, he ignited a firestorm of controversy when he suggested the Great Sphinx of Giza was built long before the age of the pharaohs. At that time, all the Egyptologists agreed that the Sphinx had been carved in 2500 BC that was carved from scratch from the limestone bedrock. 
I'm a geologist. I went there. I looked at the Sphinx within the first couple of minutes and knew there was something amiss. What we did is we looked at subsurface weathering, mineralogical changes to figure out when the rock was carved. I came to the conclusion that the Sphinx goes back not just a few thousand years, but to the end of the last ice age, so to about 10,000 BC or so. Key to Dr. Schock's analysis was the type of erosion he observed in the base of the Sphinx. If you look at the body of the Sphinx itself, I, as a geologist, noticed immediately that the core body is eroded not by wind and sand, as you expect for the Sahara Desert, but it is water precipitation. 